Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and this coffee is good and all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages, William Shakespeare. Don't forget that quote, folks, because when all this is is over, you'll go you'll remember that quote. You might want to put it on your wall because I believe when when all of this is over, we will all sit back, hopefully with um, <laughs> hopefully after moon, and be looking at this going. And I always compare it to the movie. If you haven't seen the movie Usual Suspects, I think that that's how this story ends. But what I'm going to show you today is 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 kind of. Uh, I, I I really just kind of brought together a lot of different things that should make you go hmm okay this should be pretty a pretty interesting little adventure for you if you if you haven't seen some of these things before but here's where we start we start with this from xrp crypto wolf us federal banks can hold reserve funds for stable coin issuers this opinion provides greater regulatory certainty for banks within the federal banking system to provide those client services in a safe and sound manner. This is from yesterday. Remember the OCC uh, came out with guidance um, with the SEC. Um, and I think this also was a little bit of a part of it. National banks may provide banking services to any lawful cryptocurrency business. The, the U S office of the comptroller of the currency has given the green light for national banks and federal savings banks to hold reserves for stable coin issuers. Now we keep hearing stable coin. I mean, that's a, that's a whole part of our lives. Now all we ever hear is stable coins. Okay. Stable coin, this stable coin, that stable coin, stable coin, stable coin, right? Well, when you hear stable coin, I guess usually when I hear the word stable coin, I think of a, a digital asset that's in, in my case tied to the U S dollar. So, I could sell out of, say, Bitcoin or one of these other digital assets that's more volatile. If I wanted to just sit in the equivalent of U.S. dollars, I would sell it into a stable coin and I wouldn't have to worry about the volatility. Have you ever thought of the possibility that something could be a stable coin and not just come out as tied to the U.S. dollar? In other words, not be issued as being worth $1. If you can, if you can create a a coin and and ha call it a stable coin and and bring it out at one dollar, what would prevent you from bringing it out at a hundred dollars or ten thousand dollars or and 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 saying okay and from this day forward it is stable at this value? What would prevent you from doing that? If you can create one at one dollar, why couldn't you have one at a hundred dollars or a thousand or ten thousand dollars? That's what I want you to think about. As we go through this, because the answer is you could, if you can bring one out at $1, you can bring one out at any figure. And then you could, you could, I don't know, peg it to something. Okay. In the, in the case of, of a stable coin, the stable coins we've been seeing, they, they peg it to a dollar or a fiat dollar. Okay. So here we go. So when I saw the OCC news yesterday, they're basically paving the way for stable coins to be okay for banks to hold. And if you've created a stable coin, you can go through an approval process with the SEC. This popped in my head yesterday when I was watching all of that news. With the guidance on stable coins by the OCC and the SEC today, I remembered this document from a while back. This one left me scratching my head. Now this came out, and this is true, uh, from Ganesh Haramuth, breaking XRP mentioned as stable coin by Payments Canada. Stable, here's, here's the clips. Stable coins for cross-border payment, relatively stable. Two dig digital currencies that fall into this category are RippleNet's native digital currency, Ripple, XRP, and Stellar Network's native cryptocurrency, the Stellar Lumen, XLM. 
Both Ripple and Stellar enable faster and more efficient cross-border payments relative to correspondent banking. However, they differ in that Ripple is focused on improving cross-border settlement between international banks, whereas Stellar is focused on providing low-cost cross-border payment financial services to the end user and the unbanked population. Here's the next part. Um, right here, we'll just look at this. Public, full, open digital currencies, including stable coins. Ripple's XRP, Stellar Lumen, XLM. So here, they call a commercial bank-issued closed-system digital currency, J.P. Morgan Coin or USC, private company-issued closed-system digital currency, Facebook Libra, and then they, they create a difference between XRP and XLM in those two. They are full open digital currencies, including stable coins, dash, XRP, XLM, right? So let's go back to my tweet. And as you go down here, now remember, this was put out by Payments Canada. This is pay, this is the actual uh, document right here. Payments Canada, that's payments.ca. So this must be their official page, okay? So let's go back, and this ties into this, and remember, I'll draw your attention back. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages, William Shakespeare. And so we go back. Below my tweet, somebody posts this. Pictures mean things. Guns and XRP. This is from, we all, some of you may or may not remember, this is a picture that was taken with Corey Johnson, who was the spokesperson for Ripple at the time, and he tweeted this. He said, I'll say it again, this matters. And that is the Prime Minister of um, Canada, Justin Trudeau, I believe is his name. All right, moving along. European Central Bank tweeted this out today. Occasional paper, stable coins, implications for monetary policy, financial stability, market infrastructure and payments, and banking supervision in the Euro area. So that's more um, stable coin talk, right? Now this, now I want to give you a caveat here. I know that this guy does all, puts all, all kinds of controversial things out, but I'm an adult. And so what I can do is every once in a while, if I agree with, just because someone puts out controversial things does not mean that sometimes the things that they say I agree with, sometimes I disagree with. That doesn't mean I have to talk bad about the person or anything like that. This is, this is one of the mysteries of Twitter I've never been able to figure out is, is that people think that if you disagree with someone, that means you need to call them names or this or that. Well, I, the way I approach life is sometimes I'm going to disagree with you and sometimes I'm not. When I disagree with you, okay, we can disagree, no big deal. When, I, when you say something that I do agree with or that I think is interesting, I can show it and we don't have to be enemies either way, whether I agree or disagree. We can be friends. How about that crazy idea for Twitter? <laughs> so this guy right here, and just like everybody in life, I don't agree with everything he says. I agree with some. Some of it I just find interesting. This goes in the category of something that intrigues me, and I think you need to hear it. Dear XRP community, and his name is Mr. C at Baba Suggs. Dear XRP community, the term stable coins refers to digital assets that are designed to have minimal price fluctuations, generally being backed by or pegged to assets such as fiat currency or gold. You know how this ends. And he's tweeting out this article about, but from the EU Central Bank on Coindesk, misleading term stable coins should be ditched, says ECB. <laughs> Look at that, folks. Misleading term stablecoin should be ditched, says the uh, ECB. The term stablecoins refers to digital assets that are designed to have minimal price fluctuations, generally by being backed by or pegged to assets such as fiat currency or gold. Now, look, I'm going to tell you right now, I agree with this. You know how this ends. Because this is kind of what, what I've been thinking all along is I, everything, everything. And look, this is just my opinion. Everything points to this ending the way we're talking right here. And when I get done with this, you'll kind of, you'll kind of see what I'm thinking too. Okay. Let me make sure there wasn't anything else there. Okay. Let's go to this. So I went and typed it, typed in stable coin 
on Google and look what comes up as an ad because Stellar is advertising the word stablecoin on Google. They're paying to have themselves come up at the very top. Look at what it says because words mean things. It says Stellar is a reliable and stable blockchain network for payments. They're going out of their way to call themselves a stable blockchain network for payments and asset issuance. Asset issuance. Learn more about how we are changing the world's financial systems for better, efficient network. All right. I want to say that again. Stellar is, they're not calling XL, they're not saying XLM is a stable coin. They are saying Stellar, the network, is reliable and a stable blockchain network for payments and asset issuance. All right. There's a reason that they are advertising the term stable coin right there, folks. There's a reason. Now, so Esoteric XRP comes in. And again, some of these Twitter handles are controversial, but I'm a big boy. I'm an adult. I can read. I can, I can see stuff that I think is bull and then say, okay, well, I don't show that. I don't agree with that without calling somebody names or whatever, because we don't, none of us are going to always agree on anything. But he says, here's some things that I tend to like, agree with. What if XRP and XLM were to become a stable coin? Wouldn't that mean they would have to handle all the money? We are witnessing the rollout. Ripple XRP to be a stable coin, OCC regs. Now, I'm questioning. I'm not saying I agree with all this. I'm just saying I'm questioning this. I this Some of this starts to make sense. Okay, now go down here. Source for XRP could become a stablecoin payments Canada. Go down to stablecoins for cross-border payment. Now, keep going down and you get this. Looks like Kendra Hill was right. Okay. <laughs> now, remember, I talk every once in a while on this channel. Some of the, over the course of the last three years, we've seen many accounts on Twitter or in this case on Steemit that show up and it sounds like someone who knows something and then they disappear. Okay. And they're all with, they're never showing a face or anything, but they say things. And after a while you're reading it and you're like, does this, some of these things make a lot of sense. Some of them seem like they wouldn't make sense, but you read it and you're like, this, this syncs with everything I've been reading and studying and watching all this time. So what did Kendra Hill say? Well, here's one thing she said. Digital gold for the upper class. The media is a tool that is used to control it. Now, while I'm reading this part, I want you to remember what we've seen. Remember Jim Cramer just this week. I called him. I said he was activated. Now, all of a sudden, he's he's letting he's letting um, uh, Anthony Pompliano. He's, he's literally in a video taking notes from a kid half his age when 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 uh, Jim Cramer were, was at Goldman Sachs and he's been doing this his whole life and all of a sudden Bitcoin's been a joke to him for years now and all of a sudden he's taking notes from Anthony Pompliano about how he should invest his kids inheritance in bit or some of it in Bitcoin he just he just now has had an epiphany and it just so happens his epiphany occurs about six years after he learns about Bitcoin in 2014, it occurs in the year of the digital asset, according to Ripple. Okay, so now I'll read this. The media is a tool that is used to control the lower class. The majority are very easy to manipulate. For example, Slim Fat. This is Kendra Hill's writing, by the way. Slim Fast is a popular weight loss supplement that does not work due to the poor choice of ingredients that it now look, by the way, I'm not saying anything about Slim Fast. I'm reading you what somebody else said. I'm not weighing in on that at all. But anyway, bottom line is that that it, it sells. Okay. My point is that most people are unable to think for themselves. The media thinks for them. When it comes to investing, this means that people are manipulated by high and sell low. Buy high and sell low. These manipulation tactics have been and will continue to be used with XRP. And I'm not saying anybody's trying to manipulate you there either, folks. I am able to personally destroy all arguments that are anti-XRP because I know the truth. And I possess more knowledge than you regarding Ripple and XRP, a full notebook to be exact. Da, 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 da. And it says the media will use trickery to convince you that XRP is not worth investing in long term. Use your brain, not emotions, and stay strong. Um... And then go down here, it says five years from now, 
It will be the upper class that is in possession of almost the entire supply of XRP. It is not meant for the lower class. And I've been told on many occasions by some people that XRP is not meant for you. I've heard that. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that phrase. It's not for you. Um, I mean, a lot I've heard that. However, at this moment in time, someone from the lower class can buy hold XRP, allowing them to move up in the world. I call it the token of freedom. And then this is also from Kendra Hill. This is, this is where it gets interesting. Now, by the way, I'm not saying that Ripple is in any way a, a deception. I'm not saying that. I'm just reading to you what someone else said. Jed McCaleb, co-founder of Ripple and Stellar, support of Lucis Trust, don't know what that is, has family ties connecting him to the Federal Reserve and the United Nations. In 2014, he moved on from Ripple to create Stellar, giving the illusion that the two organizations were separate entities. Ripple and Stellar are like brother and sister, each providing something of value in the new world financial system. I do agree with this. I do not do, and I will say it again, I do not believe for two seconds that Ripple and Stellar at, are at odds. Not in a million years. I believe that they are brother and sister. I, this syncs with everything I've looked at. This makes sense to me that they both have their place. I, you know what else I've always found fascinating? Have you ever watched an interview with Jed McCaleb? This guy is the most uncomfortable person in an interview that you've ever watched in your life. And I've always felt in the back of my mind, like this guy is not comfortable. He's not comfortable being out there and having to answer questions. I, anybody who's listening to me that can put Jed McCaleb on my show, I have a set, I have 30 minutes to an hour worth of questions that I would love, love to ask him. And I, I, I've, I think I've tried to get in touch with the guy before, and I think I even have his email address, but I don't, he, I'm not getting any responses from this guy. But I have a whole battery of questions that I will ask in a respectful way to Jed McCaleb if he's ever on this show. Ripple is said to be a cross-border payment prov provider, and with the use of XRP, it will be for a short time, short period of time. Um, the world will not need cross-border payment provider when, when we are using the Lumen. Stellar Lumens will become the world currency while XRP becomes a store of value. The Lumen is digital silver, and XRP is digital gold. The purpose of XRP is to be used in the derivatives market while also acting as a store of value. XRP is not and was never intended to be a currency, nor was it created to be used specifically for cross-border payments. When Codius is released, we will see its true purpose unveiled. Ripple and Stellar are the keys to the new world financial system, which will be ushered in as the old system collapses perfect timing. Does anybody, am I the only one here that feels like the old system is in the midst of collapsing? I don't think so. I think every, I don't think some, I think anybody who's paying attention to what's going on, I think every single set of ears that's listening to me thinks that the old system is collapsing right now intentionally. Okay. I think everybody thinks that. I think it. I don't think that, that, that things can go on the way they are now. I want to draw your attention back to this. Jed McCaleb, his family ties connect him to the Federal Reserve and the United Nations. Well, this is from Stellar's website. Towards global economic change, a look back at Stellar's first year. Now, remember, this is when Stellar is one, it's their first year. Okay, so, the, so Jed McCaleb, we're not talking about Ripple now. We're talking about Jed McCaleb. Now, and I, I told Greg Kidd, when I talked to Greg Kidd, who was one of the first 10 guys at Ripple, I said, Greg, I said, my father had a home building development business for almost 30 years. We never went to, we never went and visited the, uh, um, the SEC or the Federal Reserve. And you, uh, there's a video of, of, um, Greg Kidd talking about very matter of factly about how when he first arrived at Ripley, he said, we need to go visit the SEC. Well, and I told Greg, I said, I was never, that was never an option for our family business to, to just go to the SEC. I mean, who do you call? How would you, how would you schedule that meeting? How do you go to the treasury? How do you do that? 
Well, it wasn't just Ripple, folks. So, so here's Jed McCaleb, who apparently has had a falling out with Ripple, and he said, all right, screw you guys. I'm going to go form Stellar. He leaves to form Stellar. This is after one year. Okay, so here's another guy at a startup. Okay, he's another guy that's at a startup. And he's, he's, it's almost like he's a one man show. I mean, he didn't have all these guys, these connected guys at Ripple, or did he? Because this says towards global economic change, a look back at Stellar's first year, July 31st, 2015. This is when he was just getting started, right? We go down here. Spreading the word, executive, uh, executive director Joyce Kim was honored to speak about Stellar at the United Nations. So within one year of starting this company, he's able to get this woman right here, who, by the way, happens to be his girlfriend. Jed has a daughter and a son with his wife, this lady. In 2010, the family moved from Williamsburg to upstate Patterson. The couple had a divorce and Jed began dating his colleague, Joyce Kim. All right. So his girlfriend... He's able to get her in front of the United Nations. How do you do that? I mean, this guy's got a startup, startup, one year. So it's not just Ripple that's able to get in front of all these worldwide and, and major U.S. Organi uh, government organizations, get, get in front of them. It's also Jed McCaleb's people. They're speaking to the United Nations. And by the way, as long as we're here, look at this. We published the first chapter of Adventures in Galactic Consensus. What happens with, with Ripple? They call it the consensus mechanism. And how do they get consensus? You basically, you know, for those all of us out here that are just average people looking at this, my understanding of consensus is that you have servers all over the place and they're, and, and all of the servers are having to come to a consensus that the ledger, that the ledger it, you know, this money is going out and then the ledger's updating and they all agree on these accounting ledgers on these different servers, basically. But what they're saying here, and by the way, this is just a side note from this. What they're saying here is we published the first chapter of Adventures in Galactic Consensus. How would you get a galactic consensus? Well, wouldn't that mean that some of those nodes would have to be on satellites? <laughs> Isn't that what that would mean? Because... Remember, Greg Kidd said this was going to be a galactic currency. I wonder if Greg Kidd and Jen McCaleb ever talked about a galactic, intergalactic currency. You know what I mean? It's pretty weird, huh? All right, well, let's go back to this. So, so, so what Kendra Hill said is that Jed McCaleb's family has ties to the Federal Reserve in the United States, United Nations. Well, they're speaking in front of the United Nations right here. So there's that. All right. Now, um, but Ken, uh, Kendra Hill also said Federal Reserve. Well, here's Stellar sitting on stage. Jed McCaleb's right there. Um, panelist Jesse Lund, IBM. Remember, Stellar's partnered with IBM. Tammy Camp Stronghold, Jed McCaleb. Michael Warner, Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. So he's on stage with the Federal Reserve. Seems to be able to at least pull that off. And by the way, everybody on this stage except for one, you can see the tie-in. Okay, you got IBM, Stellar, and Federal Reserve Bank. But who's Tammy Camp? What's Stronghold? Well, as it turns out, I went and decided to go look at Stronghold's website. Look what their, look what their website says. And, and this goes back, remember, let's go back to Kendra Hill before I show you this. She says, Ripple and Stellar are like brother and sister. Well, it says, um, in 2014, he moved on from Ripple to create Stellar, giving the illusion that the two organizations were separate entities. Ripple and Stellar are like brother and sister, each providing something of value in the new world financial system. They're like brother and sister. In other words, there was no problem. That's what it, they're saying. Well, this company, Stronghold, that's sitting on stage with these guys, just happens by pure coincidence to be working with innovative companies like IBM, who's on stage with Jed McCaleb, and Coil, which was hatched from Ripple. And they even use Coil as an example. Learn about how Stronghold provided the infrastructure for a virtual payments network to enable streaming real-time payments on the Coil web monetization network. You can even go and read their story. Right? They've got an entire write-up 
on Stronghold and Coil and how they're working together. Pretty darn cool, if you ask me. Now, so then we've got this from J.C. Collins. And remember, folks, I need to go back for one second and remind you that all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages, William Shakespeare. Now let's go to J.C. Collins. Some of you probably know more than me because... I haven't followed stablecoin close, but OCC clarification on stablecoins today and Payments Canada reference last year that XRP was a stablecoin could mean XRP is given stablecoin status at a set price in relation to USD. Thoughts? And then this guy says, real XRP boy says, who knows how this will play out? But in the words of Corey Johnson, and here's Corey Johnson's quote, when you look at XRP, let me, let me go to this thing here. Um, I think this is his quote. Let's see. When you look at XRP, there is no mining. So from a foreign control aspect or from an environmental aspect, XRP is a different beast. And in conversations we've had with the administration, they seem to get that and think that might matter. Now let's go to this. This, I was sitting there in the audience when this was asked. This, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but I'm going to show it to you in one second just to remind you who this guy is and how he just pops up because all the world's a stage, right? He was at Swell 2019. This is when Brad Combs asked him the, the question, and he kind of misunderstood Brad Combs' question about XRP as a world reserve currency. What Brad Combs was asking, was really asking him is that is whether he was thought XRP could be a bridge, world bridge currency, a digital, like one of the reserves, okay? All right, so listen to what he says. Uh, what is attempted with XRP is not so much maintaining the value, but offering a vehicle for exchange which is quite different because there you can have value fluctuating. All you need is value to be stable for 10 seconds while the uh, whole transaction takes place. And as a result, uh, there's a whole different need for regulation. You don't need to regulate value. I don't care. So long as there is some value, the transaction can certainly take place. And as a regulator, I'm not so worried about either this displacing my fiat currency because you're moving from one fiat currency to another. It's just an interim value. And it's, it's a means of exchange. All right. So in the middle of all this, we have Chris Giancarlo. Um, September 22nd today, what I've been saying, he's talking about his digital dollar project because on cue, Forbes rolls out China Eyes new battlefield in looming showdown over U.S. dollar dominance. Ooh, scary, right? We're all, we're, China's way ahead of us. Scary. We're all scared. Everybody's scared. And as, as everybody's scared, I'm watching uh, Jerome Powell's testifying before a House committee and everybody's scared, right? So I go to the Forbes article, China Eyes New Battlefield and Looming Showdown Over U.S. Dollar Dominance. And this whole article is about how we're all supposed to be scared because China's got this digital currency and we're all behind them. The U.S. is behind and China's just so far ahead of us. And we've all just been sitting back in terror watching them do this. And then at the end of the article, it says, very end of the article, it says, while the U.S. has yet to move on a digital dollar, its potential implications have generated extensive debate and fear, by the way, and speculation around how a fully digital currency might impact the commercial banking industry. Last month, former governor of the Reserve Bank of India, Raghuram Rajan, said he expects Bitcoin and Facebook's Libra current cryptocurrency to eventually be in competition with central bank digital currencies. So we got China and then Raghuram Rajan, whoever that is, is um, expects Bitcoin and Facebook's Libra to come in here and be even more scary competition, right? Well, who is Raghuram Rajan? Well, it turns out this is Raghuram Rajan, who was at Ripple Swell, and Brad Combs asked a question to. This guy that I just played for you is this guy in the article, okay? And I will remind you, 
All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages, William Shakespeare. Um, and then there's this from Michael at, Michael at VAL5 links. The People's Bank of China has announced via its official news outlet that all preparations have been completed for the launch of its central bank digital currency. They are imminent. It's like they're about to launch nu nuclear weapons and there's nothing we can do about it because they're so far ahead of us, right? Riz XRP sent me this. A digital euro for retail payments would ensure that sovereign money remains at the core of the European payment system, according to EC President Christine Lagarde. Now, um, we got Joel Katz. By the way, uh, I'm... I registered for this thing, and you can go register. It's on uh, 2020 Forbes Blockchain 50 Symposium. You can go, and uh, David Schwartz, I believe he's going to be talking at about at about 2.05. Uh, then we have this. XRP Yo-Yo reminded me of this, um, or didn't remind me of it. He brought it to my attention. Um, the Chosen One, um, this is from Accenture. Brad Garlinghouse did a um, call with these guys. August 13th, Fast Company and Accenture. And I want, I just wanted to show you this. I'm not going to show you the video. Um, I'll show you one second of it. I want to continue to think big and take risk. And I am okay. And occasionally I'll, I'll highlight in a company meeting, hey, we took this risk. It didn't pay off. That's okay. The team that's in, that was involved with that, they're working on now a new project. Given I like that. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this to show you that, look, and remember, Accenture Accenture is is a backer of Ripple. Accenture is the backer of Chris Giancarlo, Giancarlo's digital dollar project, right? Does my son need to draw you a picture of what's going on here? It all ties together, folks. MoneyGram had had uh, eighth consecutive month of triple digit digit cross border transaction growth in its direct to consumer digital business. And then we've got this CBO unstable, unsustainable national debt will be twice the size of the entire economy by 2050. That's pretty eye opening, isn't it? Okay. I had a guy, um, on uh, line. He sent me, uh, I, you know, I have different people sending me their dot crypto addresses and I told him I'd show them. Send, if you catch my eye with one, I'll show it. Um, golden dome dot crypto, Yale alumni. And I, by the way, I have no idea if, um, if we're a lot like ones that have names of like schools or companies and these, I have no idea what the legalities of all those things are. I'm assuming that we're able to buy these and, but I don't know. I mean, you have to check with an attorney on all that. I don't know how all that works. Um, but these are pretty cool. Cause he's got, um, the, the word and then the word alumni, Notre Dame, Princeton, Columbia alumni, Brown. Alum I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if these have some pretty, pretty decent value. If you haven't gotten unstoppable domains, go in the description of all my videos. This is really cool. I bought about six or seven of them myself. And, um, I bought a bunch of like football ones. Like I have LSU football dot crypto. I have Oklahoma football dot crypto. I have several Nebraska football dot crypto, but it's really cool. So, Go in the description of my video there. You can get them for like, if you come up with a good name, they're only like 40 bucks. So not a, not a bad little piece of, of, um, crypto real estate to, to hold, uh, as, as a diversification. But they're in the, this is in the description of all my videos that I do. Go click the link and you can, you can go grab one. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family that all the world's a stage and all the men and women, merely players, they have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. William Shakespeare, thanks for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at and embarrassed by their friends, family and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up. 
never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free digital asset investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.